everyone, welcome back to the channel. Artist Empire here, and in today's fun video, we are gonna talk about ticket stubs and concerts. Now, I have the laser running behind the camera, and you guys know it's a tool that I never leave unattended. So I thought while it was running, I would have the camera out here and do one of those discussion style videos. Cleaning up the other day, I stumbled upon all of my ticket stubs. Now, I had a few hanging up, you know, that were prominent to me and everything, but I found the rest of them, and I thought, why not talk about them? Concerts are a great way to get to know people, the music they like, stuff they like to go to, the entertainment they enjoy. So I thought, why not? I love music. I always love music. It's the first thing I put on when I'm out here in the workshop. I have an old school classic iPod here, and it is linked to a guitar amplifier to provide music in the shop that I can hear over the ear protection when the tools are running. And it's packed with songs from all genres. I love all kinds of music, some old classic music, some of the newer stuff. But I am very much an old soul, and I kind of stick to that like 80s era that I am born in. I was born in 1988. But here is a stack of ticket stubs, and I've got some autographed posters laying here on the workbench, and I'd like to just briefly talk about them and show them to you guys. And hopefully you guys will appreciate the video. Again, with these discussion style videos, I'm not going to try to make it too long or drawn out, but I hope you guys enjoy it. Now, the most recent ticket stub I have, and one that was right on top of the pile, was the latest Wolverine movie. You know, Deadpool and Wolverine just came out um, a few weeks ago, and we went opening day to see it. It was a good movie, and I really enjoyed seeing the classic Wolverine back on the big screen. Here we have Ripley's Aquarium. You guys know if you follow the journeys that I love Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And Ripley's Aquarium is a mainstay there. And here's the ticket stub from when we went. And this was the last time I went. I've got a few more of these, but the last time we went, me and my ex went, it was around $75 for two grown adults to get in. And I think that's just way overpriced for that. But I have been to it a few times and I thoroughly enjoy going through especially the tunnel where you can see the sharks and aquatic creatures and all that. If you've never been I would encourage you to go at least one time to kind of tick it off the checklist when you are in the Myrtle Beach area. Here we have of course the North Carolina Transportation Museum. It is about an hour and 15 minutes up the road from me. It's right up the highway. It's not very hard to get to and that is dedicated to trains and all forms of transportation. They have the historic roundhouse. We've actually done a vlog there. It was the very first time I had tried a kind of travel vlog, you know, doing that. So it was kind of one I want to go back and do over, but it's a great place to go to. And it was only like seven or eight dollars. Again, all this is U.S. currency to get into and stay all day. It is a vast facility. So please take your walking shoes. Here's another one from Myrtle Beach. Pirate's Voyage, of course, I went there being the pirate. Now, I've been there several times, but after everything happened in the world in 2020, we haven't been back. And that's basically because, once again, just like with the aquarium, prices kind of skyrocketed. And if you're already paying to go to the beach, that's a huge extra expense on top of that. But it is dinner theater. It is a great show from start to finish. They feed you a great meal. And again, I'm thankful that I got to experience it. Here we have one. This is a lot, lot older. I want to see if the date's on here. I don't see it nowhere. Yes, I do. 2001 of February. WWE was in town, and this was at Raleigh. We went, and we got great seats right by the stage. You guys know that I used to love watching WWE, WWF, and I still keep up with the highlights, you know, just, just ingrained in me, because I remember as a kid, you know, on Monday night, having to see WCW and then WWF, but I got to go to a couple of those shows, and I'm thankful. Here we have two ticket stubs from the Mebane Train Display train show. This was the very first time I ever went to a model train show, and I was blown away by the community and the camaraderie of everyone. And basically, they have a raffle where they raffle off a train table with a full train set on it, and all the money raised at the raffle goes back into the Mebane Train Display, you know, where they can buy new trains to put on the layout, new display pieces, and just keep general operating expenses going. And I put $5 in the cup and got 5 raffle tickets and surprisingly I won the original train table that I started the train room on you know showing things it was a carpeted piece of wood with a O scale loop on it I took the O scale loop up and put my HO scale stuff on it but this little ticket stub here led to the ultimate evolution of the model train room that we have been documenting so really cool 
the Tams, the Mighty Tams, very popular and historic in beach music culture. You guys know I love beach music. We went to see them at the Paramount Theater that is in downtown Burlington. A lot of great shows happen there, and they have the popular songs, like I think it's called I've Been Hurt. I know that's the chorus of it, you know. And then they also have the good and very popular song, be young, be foolish, be happy. So a great legendary beach music band to go and see. So I'm really happy with that. Here we have the Greensboro Women's Tournament Finals, the semifinals, and this is from 2015 when I was with the Boys and Girls Club. Because the Boys and Girls Club is kind of a nonprofit they would get tickets to these events and you know they were good general admission seats you know where you could go and we would pack up everyone and go to Greensboro which is about 30 minutes away and we would be able to attend Fan Fest and be able to do all those activities get pictures with all the mascots I've got those saved somewhere on an old phone somewhere but you know I'm not a huge sports person but it was great to see this and see you know the game up close as opposed to on TV and everything it's a way to different atmosphere and especially in the historic Greensboro Coliseum so great memories there and here we have one two three is it uh, nope three ticket stubs and I've seen them more than this but for the embers you can see I am wearing the embers t-shirt it says I love beach music of course that is their signature song has a nice graphic on the back of this t-shirt this was the very first beach band I ever got to see and the very first time I got to see him again, I'm going to look for a date here. Not an actual year, but December 27th. That was called the Year End Beach Blast again down at the Paramount Theater. But I've seen him for free at Siler City a couple times. I've seen him at the Paramount Theater twice. You know, and just in other places. And I've really got to know the actual members of the band themselves. And for such a legendary beach music band, I feel humbled to get to know those people personally. And I've made some stuff for them. You know, a CMC sign with the band's logo. I've made them some night lights, some keychains, the custom compound cut ones on the scroll saw. So a great legendary group. And while they're still around, I would highly encourage you to go and see these, as well as the Tams while they're still around. Here we have the Hollywood Wax Museum. Again, this is in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And the last time I went through, again with my ex, I think there was around 115 to 120 full-size wax replicas. It is a huge and vast facility. If you've never been to a Hollywood Wax Museum, they have like props at each station. So with like the pirates, you know, they had like a pirate coat, a pirate bandana you could put on for photo ops. Um, they had Rocky, you know, a wax figure of Rocky, and you could put on the boxing gloves and act like, you know, you were boxing and everything. So a lot of props to make it enjoyable as possible. But again, with the nature after 2020, prices there skyrocketed. And the last time we went through that, I think for two, again, two grown adults, it was around $65. So it is what it is. Another thing I got to enjoy with the Boys and Girls Club was Carowinds. Carowinds is the biggest amusement park here and it's actually on the state line and it's the only amusement park in the world that straddles two states. It straddles North Carolina and South Carolina and right down the middle of the theme park there is a brick paver indicating where the state line is whether you're in North Carolina or South Carolina. Of course we are right now in Burlington, North Carolina takes about two hours to get here. I've been other times on my own to kind of film some of the rides and everything. It is a great trip and they have some fun and thrilling rides and I've been wanting to go back for a few years. It's just with time and filming the YouTube shows and then doing stuff like that and just general life. It's hard to get a group together to go up there and spend a day riding thrill rides and everything but a great place to go to. Here is one that's going to come out of left field and this was in August 2nd, 1992. I was born in 88, 89, I was four years old when I went to this concert, so I in no way, shape, or form remember it. So please keep that in mind, but it is Michael Bolton. He is one of my favorite love song singers, and you know, just his soulful voice and stuff like that. I've got most of his archive on my iPod, and especially when I'm feeling like, you know, romantic or something, I will play that music, and you know, it's always got a good vibe to it where you can kind of just sit and relax. Some of his newer stuff I really enjoy. I've got his greatest hits collection. My mom was a huge fan of his, and so am I. And I'm thankful that he is still touring. And hopefully, you know, one day I will get to see him, you know, before he finally hangs up the microphone and calls it a day. You know, so that's the case with a lot of these bands. I would love to see a lot of people while they're still touring. One 
artist I wish I could have got to see, and I got into him later on in his career, was Meatloaf. That one, again, might come out of left field, but I love his music. It's rock opera. Some of his songs are so lyrically driven, and I love that as opposed to the music. The lyrics are what play an important part in a lot of his songs, and it's kind of story-driven, so I really love that. But unfortunately, I never got to see him. But again, he's another one that I have most of his collection saved to the iPod. And here is the final one, and it unfortunately got damaged. I thought it would be a good idea to laminate the ticket stubs, and when I ran my favorite one through the laminator at the office place, it darkened it. But what this ticket stub here is the KISS Farewell Tour, the original one in 2000-2001. We went to Charlotte, and that was the original four members at the time, Peter, Paul, Ace, and Gene, in full Destroyer era, you know, um, classic bombastic kiss show and it's one of those shows that really kind of opened my eyes i was like 10 or 11 i was 10 11 12 or maybe even 13 when we went to this but it was a great show and a great night they are a great underrated band and i don't like all the politics of the band i love the music so really cool that's all for the ticket stuff so now let me show you guys some autographs i have I try to collect those whenever possible and I've got to get all these framed. I've only got one of them framed so far. Here we have from when we went and seen the Mighty Tams. There you see there the group and you have the little singers there on the photo there. And well, I meant to say, you know, the group of singers and then you have the lead singer's little boy there. He is now going to take up the mantle and continue the group for generations to come. So you see the lead singer there, Little Red. He's got his son and then some of the original, original members are still with the band. So really cool. I got all of them to sign it there. And again, this was at the Paramount Theater and the only one I have signed. Here we have the classic Embers. Now this was the last time I got to see them at the Paramount Theater. Um, we actually got to go backstage with them because they know us and everything and they signed this photo for me. Now ever since I've seen them the first time, I think that was in 2022 I believe. Um, no, it was in 2019. It was in 2019 when I very first seen them. Um, they've had some band member changes, you know, some new members have came in, some old members have left. But that's the style with musicians and things like that. But I'm thankful that I have all their autographs. Again, i got to get it framed. Here is the Castaways. I don't have a ticket stub for them because when I went and seen them, they actually were doing a free concert. Alamance County, where I'm at, let's see, you've got Mebane, you have Burlington, you have Graham. They do free summer concerts, and they try to bring in a lot of beach bands. So that's where I got this one. I went to the office store and printed this out on some nice photo paper and got them all to sign it. The lead singer there, she was nominated for um, Entertainer of the Year for Beach Music, as well as um, Craig Woolard here, going back to the Embers. He has won Entertainer of the Year for Beach Music five consecutive years in a row. So I hope that just speaks for the show that the Embers put on. They're very interactive with the fans and everything. Here is the most recent autographs, and at the time of this video's recording, I don't know when it will go public to the platform, but I've just seen them this past weekend, and they put on an amazing show. I have now seen them three times, and this is Cat 5. They are based, I believe, out of Myrtle Beach. All of them are from the surrounding area, and again, this is a band since I've seen them the very first time in Graham, North Carolina. They've went through a few member changes, but the music is still good as ever, so I got all of their autographs. I've actually seen them twice this year this was the most recent time great show that they put on and here is just two others I want to show you guys if you guys see the show about moonshine it was one of the last shows I remember my grandfather before he passed in 2012 he really started liking that show and he'd want to be in front of the TV to watch it and I remember sitting there and him talking about it you know just memories from his childhood and he just liked the rustic country outdoor in the mountains nature of the show and of course I did too but here we have some autographs from some of the stars of the show Josh Owens the one there in the shades there had unfortunately an accident so the local Harley Davidson place wanted to put on a benefit ride to him and it actually started here in Burlington North Carolina and they made a big event out of it um, the 
legendary NASCAR driver Richard Petty came in. I didn't get his autograph because he actually came in late and the line was already backed out the door. I was, you know, there early wanting to get some stuff signed. But um, got to meet them. They are very humble individuals. And this was the poster they made. And you can see there where they signed it. But really cool. And again, I've got to get all those framed. And I'd love to find a way to properly display the ticket stubs. What this video is about is just nostalgia for me. You guys know I love talking about nostalgia. And I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And what I want you guys to do is let me know down in the comments what was your favorite concert or entertainment event that you ever experienced that maybe changed your life in some way, shape, or form. I know when I seen KISS that first and only time at the original, original Farewell Tour, that kind of just opened my eyes big time. Now, there's other artists in here that I don't have the ticket stubs for or I can't locate the ticket stubs. I know I, at some point, started keeping them all in one spot. So some of those ticket stubs have fallen by the wayside. I know I have seen legendary country music artist Alan Jackson. I've seen him three individual times. You know, one, once at the beginning of his career when I was really, really young. It was at an amphitheater. I do vaguely remember that concert. Then we seen him in Greensboro, and then we seen him again in Greensboro later on, and he was touring with another legendary country music star, Martina McBride. But again, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and just me talking about memories and stuff from my life. If you're new to the channel, hopefully you'll click that subscribe button and follow me across all my social medias under the Artisan Pirate name. As always, links to contact me as well as all my social medias will always be linked down in the description box below these videos. That's about all for this one, and remember guys, if I can make it or do it, so can you. Thank you all for watching. I'm the Artisan Pirate. Take care, and I'll see you guys real soon.